daytime with Aston Avery. Now uh, they say we have to say no to bullying. Be a buddy, not to bully. Give us a break. Say no to bullying, of course. So uh, bullying does not happen just in the playground. It happens all around us, even at home, at work. But as adults, some of us do not often get to others from as far as school the yard, of course. And according to a survey by Ditch the Label, 50 young people have been bullied in the last year. Other surveys put this higher. With the growth of cyberbullying, the Guardian claims that one in five people have suffered bullying at work. But Stephen Smith joins me right now. He's my regular good contributor. Morning, yeah. And we have good some morning. very, very good guests on the program today. Stephen, hello. Hi, Aston. How are you today? Fine, thank you, Stephen. So, before we start, we just have to give a big shout out to Jake Daniels, the first pro footballer to come out 30 years, 17 years old. Couldn't be prouder. Oh, it's absolute great to see that Jake Daniels has uh, come out as monks, the LGBT uh, family there. And it's yeah. uh, great that he's come out like that as well. So it's shocking how many people are bullied, Stephen. So do you have any personal experience of being bullied? Oh, yourself? I- Asin, if you're a little bit different, you're bullied all your life. And I have been bullied all my life. The upside to it, I've had an incredible life. So I can't complain of that. I had to deal with it. But um, yeah, I've been bullied since I was a, a little kid all the way through to now, practically. Um, <laughs> but you learn how to deal with it. And I shouldn't ever have to, to deal with it. That's why I campaign tirelessly to stop bullying. That's one way, as they say as well there, uh, Stephen, is obviously bullying is a uh, high end there, but uh, also something that needs to be addressed as well. They say, no, we have to say no to bullying. And also at the same yeah. time there, they, you have to be strong and commit to yourself to be strong as well. But uh, we're going to be joined now, Stephen, by someone who's uh, in the musical Soul Sisters at the moment. And that's been at the Towngate quite recently as well. Nicole Faraday joins us right now. So, Nicole, Hello. Hello, lovely to see you. Yes, we were at the town gate only last week, in fact, and it was a really good crowd, pretty full. Can I just say how gorgeous you're looking? Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming to you from some travel lodge somewhere around the country. I've literally been on the road since um, <laughs> the beginning of March, so I'm quite looking forward to the end of May when I actually get to go home, be back in my own bed again. <laughs> oh, it's also, it's also, but listen, we're, we're talking about bullying today. And looking at you, you're gorgeous. You have everything going on for you. You're a celebrity. People would think you'll never be bullied. Well, no. I mean, I'd be as far back as I, same as you, really, as far back as I can remember, even back to being at school, because my 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 ne- my actual surname is Morris. People used to call me Morris Minor because I was quite little. <laughs> and that sounds quite harmless. But, um, <laughs> but I think it was also like, you know, boys that fancy you, they're mean to you if you yeah. don't do them an interest. Um, people that are jealous of you I've always had that where people see you as some kind of even however nice you try and be if yeah. people are intimidated by you or feel threatened by you be it the way you look be it how clever you are be it the fact as you said if someone's a little bit different people people don't like something that they don't understand and so if they feel that they don't quite get you I think that's what makes them bully you and I've yes as as you said I've experienced it ever since I was little right through to I mean I think as well I'm so glad that social media wasn't around when I was younger because (laughs) the advent of social media it's been awful I mean as an adult I've been bullied via social media several times by people that felt that I didn't give them enough attention as friends or uh, people, again, that were were jealous of me or whatever, and it's horrible. That was adults. And the frightening thing is adults still bully. Yes. Uh, I mean, I I, I was in a work situation where, again, with somebody that should know better, but was setting people up against each other, uh, making false rumours. I mean, just appalling behaviour that they probably wouldn't identify in their own mind as bullying, but it was bullying. I think it's when people feel intimidated by you. Perhaps maybe they feel like you're better than they are at your job. Yeah. Or you're more popular, you have more friends, all that kind of stuff. I think that that's what turns people nasty. And instead of thinking, oh, what a great person to be around, I want to spend more time around them. You end, people end up kind of turning against that person because they feel jealous of the person. I think that's, that's a big issue. And yeah, but as I say about the social media thing, I mean, I've, as you know, I even to, to the point of last year, some ex friends of mine were bullying me via social media. I actually had oh. to, it got so serious, I had to go to the police about it. I mean, yeah. that's how serious it can get. So um, I just feel very sorry for youngsters it's today. A, it's a great cards weapon, social media, because they, they don't have to look at the person, they can fire exactly. at her and see what they like. 
It's appalling, really. I mean, yeah, there's lots of positive. Warriors, isn't it? Cool warriors. Amazing things. This is one of the downsides of it. Um, was, uh, the, one of the things here we have to ask is, was there ever, when you were a kid, someone to help you? Um, not really. I didn't. I've, yeah. I mean, I've, I've always been close to my family, I suppose. If I was particularly upset at school or whatever, then I would be able to talk to my parents. But I don't really remember there being, I think these days there's a lot more awareness of bullying and you have bullying counsellors and things, don't you? And you have, yeah. I know that they have people that go in and talk in schools and things, which we never had. The yeah. same as being uh, LGBT, you know, growing up LGBT, you get people that were intimidated by that and would, you know, be abusive towards you or, well, you know, still is. Take, I mean... take the nicky out, you know, but I'm, I think now, hopefully nowadays, People are becoming more aware of the fact that there are pe different people in the world and that everyone has is valid. Um, so yeah, so no, I don't really feel like I had anyone to help me. So I think things have improved from that point of view. Well, I hope they have. I think it's interesting what you just said that um, you know you can talk to your parents, but the number of times I've read articles in newspapers that say the child has committed suicide, and the parents have said, "I thought they were really popular." You know, oh, kids have a, a way of disguising when they're bullied. And there's very few kids I know that have actually gone to their parents and said, hi, I'm being bullied because they're frightened because they think they're, they're not fitting in. They've been let down. And uh, uh, and uh, so they disguise. I certainly never told anybody I was being bullied. N not at all. I was embarrassed. Yeah. So yeah. That, that being said here, and Nicole, as well, obviously there's a lot of jealousy that goes around, especially within the showbiz industry right there. So how much of the Green Eye Monster comes to play within the showbiz industry here? Oh, totally. I mean, I it's hard to say anything without kind of giving in. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to no. get involved in any specific. Oh, no. But no, no. I, used to, I used to be in a television programme, for example, and when I joined it, um, I was kind of brought in as the new, very glamorous, you know, sexy one. And there were certain members of the cast that didn't like that. They were older and they perhaps used to be the sexy one. And they were <laughs> like that. And so therefore they were very, very unfriendly. And I used to go home in tears because I felt like, why don't they like me? And it's only kind of, it's sometimes it's hard to see it when you're in it, but it's only yeah. from the outsider's point of view and people go, but it's because they're jealous of you. You know, that's the reason they're not friendly to you. That's the reason they make, you know, offish remarks. That's the reason they kind of make you feel like you're stupid or you don't know what you're doing. It's because they they feel like, who's this new kid on the block, like stealing my thunder kind of thing. And so, yeah, so I, I definitely think within the industry, I've had, you know, theatre shows I've done, you know, recent things I've done, people that are intimidated by the fact that I think I'm pretty good at my job. I don't think they like some, necessarily people don't like that. I love working with people that are good at their job because I think that if, God, if you're working yeah. with good people, it inspires you to be better and you can all just kind of lift each other up. But there are some people that just don't like working with people because perhaps they don't have the skill set, and so therefore they feel intimidated and inferior and they take it out on you by being separatist and trying to kind of make you be the, you know, the outsider. That's very interesting because that show you're talking about, and I know the show you are talking about, you're not the first actress to tell me that story about older actresses bullying them. Yeah. And, and uh, so which is a shame because a lot of older actresses give so much and help put the chain in the crack. That's very, very, very definitely. Yeah, very, very, but you're not the first to tell me that story about that particular show, uh, the older actresses bullying, which is really is no, one of the things that you is bullying. Uh, uh, is sexual harassment and it, it is a form of bullying you know if you're trying to go if someone says no um I, I, you know we're reading so much with the entertainment industry and, and sexual harassment as an actress have you ever felt as though going into a, a casting or something or, or, or even going to work that you're being sexually harassed yeah i've definitely had a, over the years i mean yes sadly the, the the day and age that we live in i mean again i hope things are getting a bit better there's the me too movement now people are far more aware and i definitely think in my 20s when i was a bit more naive i would not that i ever did anything i'd always run away <laughs> so, you know going for a casting in a hotel and i suddenly realized it didn't feel quite right and i had to get out of there yeah. and people that have kind of made offers to me of work and said oh you know i could change your career if you just do this kind of thing so like literally almost on a plate like we can make this happen for you if this 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 and that's just awful i mean yeah. i've always my my moral compass has always meant that i'd 
I'd rather not have the work. I would rather always have the work on the, on the merit of my performance. But definitely it exists. And I'm sure some people probably are perhaps feeling vulnerable at that particular moment. If you're feeling uh, vulnerable, then I can see how you might fall for it. I think now what people are talking about it, but interestingly enough, the Marilyn Monroe documentary on Netflix, mm. uh, they had uh, the, 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 uh, the producers or the, the, the bosses that had a black book of actresses that would <laughs> sleep with them. <laughs> oh. get notes. Back in back in Maryland's days, uh, and uh, it, it, it's, it's it's quite frightening, really, isn't yeah, it? it? It is. It really is. It can be quite frightening as well, especially about for actresses and actresses here. Uh, that I have to say, there, uh, Nicole, as well. So, is there anything that can be done for actresses, but also actors there who yeah, are actors. into a situation and then are frightened afterwards? I think um, I definitely think it's always worth talking to uh, our union equity is really really good they're really good at protecting people and I think that they have I mean I've never actually approached them about that kind of stuff but I'm pretty sure that they would have uh, safeguarding things in place and they would have somebody that you could talk to there they do send representatives down if you've got legal legal issues or anything like that so I'm pretty sure within the context of that I think it's just important to speak out really I think that's the only thing you can do is make people aware speak out don't put up with stuff talk to one of your colleagues that you trust um and yeah look look to speak to your union representative I would say because that's kind, yeah. of, kind of what they're there for really yeah because there's so many people I've met that are frightened they're not going to work again if they report this person yeah. or they're so powerful or so well known that yeah. uh, they get away with it and then you're well, going to with that film producer last year wasn't yeah, it I, I know it's frightening and you'll never work again if you if you say you know and there's an, a lot of people out there uh you know there's a, a few other jimmy savills out there trust me that yeah. people are just frightened to say look this happened to me because they know they have so much money and power which is again a form of a form of, a form of bullying uh it's interesting what you said about equity as well with so many reality stars going straight into things that perhaps they haven't got equity cards, it is important to be a member of equity, isn't it? I think it is. Yeah, it's, it's really important because the union only has strength by having the members that kind of support it and it in turn supports them. So yeah. if you're not a member of a union, yeah, you know, I, I do think it's important because I countless times I've had to to ask them for help on different contracts and they've been really, really good for me. I know some people say, oh, it's a waste of time, but I I personally, my personal experience is that they've been brilliant at helping me when I've had um, legal yeah. issues or found myself in a job which wasn't what I thought it was going to be, etc. And getting a card is like an apprenticeship, isn't it? You know, you have to do, you can't just get an equity card, you have to actually be to drama school or at least been in a... a yeah, you need a, to have a certain amount of professional credits, definitely. Yeah, yeah. so it's really, 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 really something that worth backing up. Yes. Oh, um, right, so on a lighter note, <laughs> <laughs> you're in Soul Sisters. Tell us all about Soul Sisters. Soul Sisters the Musical, well, we've been touring, as I say, we started rehearsing in February, we've been touring since early March, we finished at the end of this month, so there's only a few dates left, I think we've got 12 shows left, um, but it's about three friends, played by myself, Amel Barabba from uh, Sugar Babes, and Wendy Harriet, who was on The Voice, um, and she's also a backing singer for people like Jennifer Hudson, so she's got an oh, amazing cool. voice. Um, uh, and it's about three friends who 20 years ago were on top of the pops with a hit, Kind of one hit wonders really oh and yeah then, so they were they are inspired by the big kind of diva bands from the 50s and people like um diana ross etc so even yeah. though it's only meant to be 20 years ago they had their hit it's all very kind of it's that kind of okay. type kind of look that they have anyway um all we know from the beginning of the show is the fact that these three friends haven't seen each other for a long time and that they're reunited for a soul weekender at a holiday camp and basically the entire show then is just us three. There's only three of us in it. So it's, it's quite hard work. <laughs> and it's a, it's a new brand new musical. So it's a play with songs, but it's all original material. That's one thing. But some people have gone, why didn't you sing songs we knew? Well, the point is it's original material. And I think, <laughs> yeah, especially after COVID, it's really important to, to support new British writing and new theater. Yeah. Um, 
So yeah, so basically the dramas unfold as you realise that there's all is not what it seems and there's all sorts of in you know interwoven things oh, to do this story. And... Coming to the West End. Uh, well, that would be nice. I know definitely when we finish the tour, we're going to go into a studio and record the, the album because everyone has said how much they love the, the songs. So um, if you if people can't catch the show, then maybe they'll um, maybe they'll have a listen to the album. I expect it will be on iTunes or something. But yeah, we've toured now till the 29th of May. I yeah. think we are in Devon tonight, Barnstable in Devon tonight. Oh, God, a journey. <laughs> yes, I know. And then I have to say, Aston uh, Nicole has had rave reviews for this, by the way. Yeah. Um, yeah. The show has really, especially with the uh, what I've been hearing at the Town Gate as well. It's been an absolutely uh, amazing show. And that being said, Nicole, as well, obviously, you know, most people know you appeared in the TV show Bad Girls, of course, here. So, did so acting somebody in parts in Bad Girls come naturally to you here? Did acting what? Sorry, sorry. Acting, what? So, did the acting, uh, did acting in somebody and in Bad Girls come naturally to you when you took on the role? Um, I suppose so. But then at the same time, I I wouldn't say my character was a particularly bullying character. She was bullied, but then she kind of deserved it because she'd blown the prison up and killed people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm technical. That might be a bit bullying, but <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, yeah. So I, so I, as a character. <laughs> My character was very self-absorbed, very self-obsessed. Day in, day out, she was nice as pie to everyone, but all the time she was plotting. So it was a brilliant role to play. Um, and then, so she didn't bully people as such, but then, as I say, she put everyone's lives in danger. So then the, the rest of, the whole of the rest of my time on there, I was being, um, I was being bullied by the, the cast, who were all obviously furious about the fact that I'd injured, maimed them and killed some of their friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's, did you, did you t go back to your school days when you tried to blow your school up? Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, I didn't actually, there were no explosives involved. It was a schoolgirl prank that went wrong. <laughs> 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 but Nicole, listen, uh, and I know this, uh, I've talked to other actors who have told me this, have people mistaken you for the characters you played on Emmerdale, Bad Girl, and come up to you and had a go or, or um, sent something to you? Actually, no, and I know that does happen. Really? I think that happens more for soap stars who kind of, because people see them sort of three times a week in their living room, so yeah. they get so used to having that person, it's almost like they, they believe that person is exists but whereas I've been but in Emmerdale I was only in it for six episodes and Bad Girls and Casualty obviously were my main roles so that yeah. was a week um mate I have had people kind of follow me for a long period of time you're aware they're following you and you're like, oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. And, eventually, and eventually they go are you that girl off Bad Girls and you go yes they go thanks and then they leave it's really funny it's like what's the point you've just followed me for like half a day just to ask me if, if I'm that girl off Bad Girls and then they then they go thanks and they leave. Sometimes they ask for a picture. Well, I did that the other day. I was at, I was at a theatre and I saw this woman and I, and I thought I knew her and I kept, my mind was right. And it was one of the actresses of Benidorm. Oh, <laughs> God. So different from the show. And yeah. I went to her, excuse me, I just said my own mind when you were in Benidorm. <laughs> <laughs> so you got anything coming up next, uh, Nicole, after the oral appearance in uh, Soul Sisters here? Well, actually, I'm very excited. I'm going to be, the f it's my first ever guest entertaining job on a cruise ship. I'm going on the Spirit no. of Discovery. Um, yes, I've never done it before. I've got friends that have been doing it for a while now. Um, but um, it's where I'm flying out to Gibraltar on the 5th of June. Then I'm joining the Spirit of Discovery, which is a Saga cruise cruise ship. And then we are doing a, cru a cruise of the Med. And then I fly back from Cadiz on the 15th. So I'll be at sea for 10 days. Oh, you'll be brilliant on the cruise. So that'll be great fun. I think um, I'm just doing two, because obviously, as you know, singing is, is probably my first love, actually. You're so I'm brilliant. Doing two 45 minute sets on board, and the rest of the time will be holiday, which is so welcome. And you, it's all inclusive, isn't it? You get you get all your, you get everything comp, don't you? With yes, your, exactly. With so <laughs> I'm, basically, uh, I'm basically singing for my holiday. That's That's what I'm doing. I'm singing for my holiday and my supper. 
Um, um, but I, you know, I'm really looking forward to it. It'll be lovely after because I've been, spent so much time on this blooming van, as you know, from having looked at the schedule. What I know. <laughs> you said, you said to me, that's not a tour, that's an assault course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen, we're, we're so happy you could find time uh, to come on and really good luck with the rest of the show. Thank you so and much. the cruise. And we'll, uh, I might see you, Stephen, perhaps in St. Albans I, or something. I, I, oh, yeah, that'd be really nice. It's not too far St. Albans, is it? Cool, because Sherry wants to come as well. So that's oh, okay, I'll speak to her then. All right. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you once again, Nicole. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Woo.